There were a lot of updates to After Effects in 2024. New features, new functionality, new look, even some effects were updated, and I think it's worth looking back at some of the more exciting updates. So here's my list of the top After Effects updates that you should know about for 2025. And yes, I'm even going to cover the advanced 3D render engine, which some might say is controversial. But let's start with the look. There was a UI redesign to match the Adobe Spectrum design system that other Adobe apps use. And if you look at what we had before, this is kind of a big deal. Let's just peel back the page and look at that. Pretty nice update. All kidding aside, I was actually really excited for this update. I don't think it's a huge change, but the whole app does feel more modern and clean to me. Besides reskinning the entire app, we can now choose between three brightness levels for the appearance and increase the overall contrast. I've seen a lot of hate towards the new brightness and contrast levels, but I like it personally. But what I was really excited about was the Windows version added improved UI responsiveness. Resizing panels, scrolling, and even just moving keyframes around was unbearably laggy on Windows before this update. I still can't believe that it was ever an issue, but I'm not gonna dwell on the past and just enjoy the snappiness that I have now. Now, really quickly, for a limited time, I am discounting my courses at jakeinmotion.com, so if you're looking for a focused, comprehensive learning path for getting up and running with After Effects, or you're ready to learn Figma specifically for motion design, check the link in the description or click the card above. Now, there were some pretty great functionality added to After Effects last year. My favorite was multi-layer keyframe copy and paste. In the past, copying and pasting keyframes from multiple layers at once would paste duplicated layers, and now After Effects is smart enough to just paste the keyframes on the same properties across the selected layers. This is especially useful for character animations where you have lots of keyframes that need to be duplicated across multiple control layers and required third-party tools like Duik or Motion to get around before. We can also now paste reversed keyframes, which is just a big time saver when you want to mirror an animation. No more need for time reversing after pasting. Navigating layers also got easier in the timeline with multiple layers selected, the I and O shortcuts now move to the earliest in point and the latest out point of the selected layers instead of just the top layer in the selection. And this is the part of the video that I'm gonna ask you to like it, leave a comment sharing your favorite update or complaining about what's still broken or missing. And if you're not subscribed yet, what are you doing? It's free and all of that stuff really does help my channel out and allow me to keep making these videos. Now, let's talk about the advanced 3D render engine. The After Effects team has been working hard on this latest render engine for a while now, and there are lots of strong opinions and criticisms that I've seen about the team spending time on this instead of improving overall performance, and I honestly haven't made up my mind entirely about how I feel about all of that. But before the comments get out of hand, I've met and worked with several of the After Effects team members, some of whom are my personal friends, and they're all great people, so be kind with your comments. One criticism I see coming up all the time about this renderer is that Andrew Kramer did a better job 15 years ago with Element 3D, and I agree. But here's the thing, and I can already hear the angry fingers typing in the comments, but Element 3D is still just a plugin that renders on 2D solid layers, and this is 2025. Yes, you can still do a lot with Element 3D, and there are ways to make it work well, even though it's just being rendered on 2D layers, but 15 years ago, Element's speed is what made it so attractive to me, and the fact that I didn't actually have to leave After Effects and learn an expensive 3D package made it even better. But we're living in the age of GPU rendering, free 3D software, and a wealth of YouTube tutorials. If I actually want 3D motion design, I'm going to choose Blender over Element 3D. The only reason I would stay in After Effects is because the 3D I need is so simple, Element 3D can still handle it. But if it really is simple enough for Element 3D, it's also probably simple enough for the advanced 3D engine, which got a lot of updates in 2024. So let's take a look at those updates now. First of all, embedded 3D model animations are now supported. So if I animate a model in Blender or Cinema 4D or even just find a free model like this one that's already animated, I can export that as a GLB with animation, combining the actions into one, and it'll show up in After Effects as an animation track. I can even time stretch this layer with Alt plus click and drag, which Props to Aron Stern for that one. Check out the card above to see the video I learned that technique in. But the animation will be interpolated in After Effects, meaning it's going to play back faster or slower with no loss in quality. That's pretty awesome because now I can animate from the assembled state to the exploded state using time remapping with complete control over timing and easing directly in After Effects with native layers. No plugins necessary, and that's a big deal. And with the Draft 3D option enabled, it's unbelievably fast to work with the Advanced 3D Render Engine. It honestly feels more responsive than a 2D comp with shape layers, which don't even get me started. Even the reflections are still accurate in draft mode. Disabling it does give you shadows and a higher quality render, which if seeing the shadows is important, you can still have fast previews by lowering the preview quality until you're ready to actually render. 
And if this wasn't enough to convince you that the advanced 3D render engine is worth the time that the After Effects team has been putting into it, just check out these tutorials from Stefan to see just what's capable natively in After Effects using the advanced 3D render engine. We also got the ability to cast and accept shadows for 3D objects, create shadow catchers that only render shadows cast on them, and depth data is now accessible with the 3D channel extract effect on a pre-comp, which is how I added depth of field to these shots. These are all features that were already available in the classic 3D render engine, which makes me think that it's all headed in the right direction, but there still are some pretty big features missing from the advanced 3D engine that I hope to see soon. Number one and two on my wish list are native depth of field and motion blur, so I don't have to rely on depth maps and fake motion blur from other plugins. I'd love to see shadows cast from lights other than environment lights. Reflections from other 3D layers and self-reflections would be great. Right now, only environments are visible in reflections. The After Effects user guide says that currently After Effects only calculates reflections from environment lights, which to me sounds like they're working on this feature, but that's just speculation, fingers crossed. It'd be awesome to have 3D primitive shapes just like we have in Cinema 4D, and it would fit right in with After Effects 2D shape primitives. Expanded control over materials would be killer, especially having the ability to use a layer in the comp as a material source. That would allow me to animate the iPhone screen in a separate 2D comp and place it on the model directly in After Effects. And if we can control things like the roughness of a material with an After Effects layer, then we can do so much more than just shiny or matte objects in After Effects. Now, I'm not expecting photoreal renders from After Effects, but the reality is Adobe has given us a very capable 3D renderer and it uses image-based lighting and gives us great looking shadows and has physical-based materials. There's just a few more things on that wish list that if we can tick those things off, if we can get that in After Effects, then I'm gonna have less and less of a reason to jump into Blender or another piece of software to get my 3D work done. Obviously, it's dependent on the project, but if I can get the job done inside of After Effects, then and I'm gonna stay in After Effects. And like I said, using Draft 3D makes working in this 3D environment a breeze. I really have had no issues and it's been a really great experience, which is why I'm optimistic about the advanced 3D render engine moving forward. To wrap up this section, my final thoughts on the advanced 3D renderer are that it's really nice to have. It's great to see how much functionality has been added and improved over the last year, and I hope it just keeps getting better and better. One detail I don't see getting much attention is the fact that 3D models are actually native After Effects 3D layers in this render engine, and they interact and intersect with other 3D layers and lights just like any other After Effects layer. It's not perfect, but we have a true 3D workspace in After Effects now. Keep up the great work, After Effects team. You've got my support. Moving on to some final updates I think are worth mentioning, CC Ball Action got an update that adds displacement and some other new controls. I made a tutorial covering all of those new features. There were 33 new presets added, all of which are worth checking out. I made a list of my favorites in my last video. The Roto Brush got an update that improved freeze performance, which is always a great thing. And per character text and paragraph styling is now accessible to expressions, giving you even more control of what's possible with expressions. That's it. Those were my favorite updates to After Effects in 2024. Happy New Year. Thanks for watching and here's to another year of After Effects updates.